Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today, Jim, who's in his fetching red coat, and myself will be making a video about the SUV King. But before we do any of that, please click on the subscribe button. Um, I'm making videos about Range Rovers, X Racing Greyhounds, my adventures in the countryside all the time, um, and I'd love your support. And also leave feedback in the comments, let me know what you want to see more of. But for now, let's get into it. I think today we'll also see Jim running around a little bit as usual. So I just woke up this morning and um, in my YouTube feed, um, there was a gorgeous thumbnail actually, um, entitled SUV King, which I just assumed was the Range Rover L322, but it actually turns out um, it isn't according to somebody else. And actually, I just want to challenge um, this notion. Um, it also made me realize at that, that moment that I hadn't actually got in the Range Rover for about a week. So um, taking it for a little spin is well overdue. And what not being in the Range Rover for over a week means is that Jim hasn't been on a nice long run anywhere. Um, so today it is a bit of a gray day. Um, it's cold. Um, so we've got his coat on for the first time um, this year and we're gonna take him out for a little run. And I'm gonna make this quick video um, about what is an SUV King? So the moniker King obviously means preeminence. And in this world of modernity, new technology, I mean, we've got electric cars, we've got self-driving cars. It's really difficult to quantify what the preeminence of, or of anything is. So I'm definitely of the school that um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And of course, we've got the fossil fuel crisis, etc. But at the same time, there's a lot of energy that's gone into creating um, these cars and scrapping them, I just probably think is not that um, helpful to the environment either. Um, and also, this is kind of like a moment in um, human ingenuity. Um, the combustion engine, which I personally think is just a genius invention that has not only offered everybody um, mobility and freedom, it's also offered us the ability to enjoy ourselves in um, us the ability to enjoy ourselves in our recreational vehicles. An SUV, I mean sports utility vehicle, the title is in the name. So for anything to be the king of anything, it needs to be the preeminent one and it also needs to be fit for purpose. So what is a sports utility vehicle? Well basically um, it is a car that's a, a cross between a 4 by 4 an off-road vehicle and I mean really it's undisputed that the Range Rover um, and Land Rover, all Range Rover, Land Rover products are the vehicles that can take you off-road. So Matt Watkins video, um, the new Range Rover Sport, sure I buy it, I mean it can be um, you know, seen as something special because it's a Land Rover, because it's a Range Rover. But is it really the king? Does it deserve that title? And really, kind of like, I'm defending this on behalf of Range Rover L322s, but also Range Rover Vogues. And I will tell you actually at this point that the new Range Rovers, um, full fat Range Rovers, um, to me don't really seem like utility vehicles. They seem like floating palaces. And don't get me wrong, there is definitely a space for that in this world. Um, it's not the space I'm in right now. It's definitely what I'd aspire to um, somewhere along the line. But you know, I've talked about fleets of cars before and what, what my dream lineup would be. And the L322, because in my opinion, it is the king of SUVs, um, would definitely be um, a daily driver. Like I love the way they drive I love the way they feel. I love the fact that they're not new and sparkly, although this one um, may as well be because it's in really perfect condition. Um, and just for anybody out there, because I'm wearing a big coat at the moment, um, the heating does actually work in this car. The heated seats, the heated steering wheel, the heating in general, it's all good. It's just I jumped in to take um, Jim for a quick walk and I thought I'd make a video along the way. Um, and although it doesn't actually take that long to um, heat up, um, I'm conserving that teeny tiny little bit of petrol because one thing that L322 or the 4.2 supercharged V8, which is the one I'm sitting in, does do, and it's probably the king of this, um, is burning petrol. But that's okay. 
On the point of burning petrol, we went on a road trip this weekend and my partner drove it, you know, um, for a long distance for the first time. And he's very kind of like price sensitive to everything, as we all are actually, but he is in particular. And the way he drove this car was so beautiful. I mean, the rev counter, I like to joke that he didn't get the rev counter above one. Um, actually though, in all seriousness, he the rev counter did not go above one and a half for the whole journey. And he just managed to find like a, a, a lorry or, you know, a truck in America, I guess, or, um, you know, um, a, a slow driver and just stuck behind them. And I sat in the back to keep Jim calm, but also to read my books and magazines and make a little video from the back of the car. But I found that um, that kind of like gentle driving um, was just perfect for me. Like I didn't get car sick. Um, and I think that's because of the elevated position of the car, but also it was just kind of like a really pleasurable experience. And this is what the full fat Range Rover, the L322, the Range Rover Vogue SE does for you. It makes you appreciate life in a very different way. It makes you want to waft along. And so that to me is very kingsmanly, queenly. Um, you know, it's very kind of regal. Um, that's how, I don't feel regal in this car at all. I just feel like me in a, a really, really kind of like fabulous car. Um, but I feel as close to regal as I could possibly um, ever aspire to be. So back to this whole point then, I mean, is newer better? Um, you know, I just don't think so. So, um, the best example I can give you is I, I'm really into fashion. I've always been into fashion um, and luxury fashion in particular, all the designer brands on Bond Street and Madison Avenue and, you know, Rodeo Drive, Ginza, all of those kind of really smart shopping places. They're incredibly expensive. So for many years, I've just kind of like invested in one designer piece a year. And, um, you know, the, there's a risk of obviously of doing that because like things go in and out of fashion. But I found with those kind of like design classic pieces that I've invested in, they've stood the test of time and some of them have come in and out of fashion, but I've enjoyed um, wearing and using all of them. And they've been such great quality that they've lasted. And so I have taken that strategy um, and bought it over to the to the car buying world um, and mainly because I don't need a daily driver because I commute into work on a train um, so this is absolutely a utility vehicle um, it is literally um, you know it's not a toy I hear people talking about that for me it's not I suppose it could be considered a toy but it's not really I mean it has a utility and it's really to take um, you know me and my dog Jim Okay, so we've just hit um, the only downside of owning a big car is finding parking, but I'm just gonna continue driving until I find a place to park. And I found one the universe has provided, amazing, and it's big enough for probably two Range Rovers, which is wonderful. But you know, you can't just nip this into any old spot. So I'm just gonna nip out and get a coffee and then I'll be back to finish this video. So while getting my coffee, um, I just saw a um, the Mark I Range Rover Sport. And that is a beast of a beauty of a car. And so, you know, actually when it comes to the king of SUVs, I'm going to say that the L322 um, is the king, but the um, L305 360, I don't actually know what the name of the Range Rover Sport is because they're not my particular vehicle of choice. Um, but I'm just going to say that the Range Rover um, Sport Mark I is the queen. 
um, and therefore that would still lead to be the fact that the new kind of Range Rover Sport is not the king of SUVs because it's this one. Um, it's funny because I do live in kind of like um, Land Rover Central, Central here. There's actually one in front of me, you probably can't see it. Um, and it's um, potentially part of the reason why I love them so much because I'm just like so familiar with them. Um, so um, there you have it. Obviously it's not a foregone conclusion, um, but I don't know why, it just kind of completely riled me up. Um, in a good way, of course, like all in like, you know, very kind of like good humor and good faith. Um, but I just thought it was kind of like really interesting um, and very strong statement. And I know in the world of kind of, um, you know, making content, etc., it's great to have a strong statement. Um, I just don't agree with it. Um, and by the way, for the record, um, as you all know, I'm kind of Land Rover mad. Um, look, there's a an L322 just here going past um, in a gorgeous, so dirty, I can't even tell what colour it is, maybe a silver. Um, it's funny because where I live in the UK, it's, um, it's fairly, it's very close to London, um, which is where I work and that's why I live here. But it's also very rural, which is kind of um, quite attractive. There are no real big towns here lots of like small um, villages um, and actually one very small city one of the smallest cities in the UK in fact I've just found another use for the bumper of the car which is um, to store my flask and probably lots of other things so let's hopefully um, not forget that it's there Jim come on good boy Jim go on Jim. <laughs> 